Hey there, folks. Uh, so I've got another backlight kit from Cloud Game Store here. Um, pretty similar to their previous several backlight kits, uh, with a couple exceptions and quite a few new features. Um, this particular version is the one that uses the smaller 2.45 inch screen. Uh, so the stock screen size on an original Game Boy is about 2.6 inches. Um, that's a wonderfully bad example, isn't it? Uh, there we go. About 2.6 inches. Whereas this one is a little bit smaller, as you can see by the lens that it comes with. Oh, that's not even... Oh, that one's stock size. Interesting. Okay, so it uses a slightly smaller screen, but a stock size lens. Um, interesting. We'll see how that works out. Uh, but also, some new features. I don't know, the, the kit itself is a little bit nicer, uh, a little bit more polished compared to last year's version. Uh, one of the things I especially like is that it does come with a speaker and a bracket. Uh, and the speaker uses the connector on the backlight kit itself, so you don't actually have to solder to install one of these. Um, personally, I've never found that to be an issue, but I understand that not everyone solders, so, you know, if, if you're in that camp and this thing interests you, then, uh, well, I probably have some good news for you. Uh, so, this is what all you get. You get the adapter board that connects to the DMG. It has all the button inputs. Unlike some previous versions of uh, Game Boy, original Game Boy kits, uh, this is the button board and it is the backlight kit. So you're not plugging anything else into this, you just plug the screen in here and then plug this end into the DMG and speaker in here and your Bob Gianti. Uh, so you get this, the screen, a lens that looks to be stock sized, a bracket for holding the screen in, the ribbon cable for connecting the button board to the DMG, and the speaker itself. All right. So first thing we want to do before committing to the install is we do want to go ahead and test this, uh, and because of who I am as a person, um, I'm going to test it both before and after so that we get some power usage numbers and we can get a little bit better of an idea what to expect. Um, for the install here, this is what we're going to be using. I have already partially disassembled this Game Boy just so that I could hook up this stock OEM uh, screen with no backlight, no mods or anything. Uh, this was the only one I had that had speakers, but trust me, it does work. It's just know kind of nasty uh, but let's turn the volume up there just run a quick test oh I have no volume oh I had it backwards duh DMGs go up yeah it's very quiet though I don't know what that's about Original Game Boys are usually quite a bit louder. I wonder if this thing just needs service or if my um, testing screen is finally going bad on me. But either way, it works. Should be good enough for a baseline. So let's get some batteries out of this. Actually, I'll set these aside. that aside too. And I've got my power supply set to 4.8 volts because that is the nominal voltage of four rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. I think it is a good test. And then I'm gonna set that on there. Hopefully it stays. I'll try not to knock it off with my button pressing. All right, so in Pokemon Silver, same game I usually always test with, 
um, at least other Game Boys, uh, well, Game Boy Colors, I guess, <laughs> usually test with Pokemon Yellow for DMGs and Game Boy Pockets, but we're doing Silver today. Uh, anyway, in the overworld, same place I always test, uh, 4.8 volts. This console is pulling between 50 and 56 milliamps, it looks like. Which is pretty typical for an original Game Boy. Um, just good to get a baseline so that when I plug in the new screen and check and see how much power usage it gets, we can extrapolate what kind of battery life. Uh, so for example, if on your Game Boy, with your batteries or whatever, you get about 30 hours of battery life, and it's using about 250, not 250 watts, but 0.25 watts, um, you install your new screen and it starts using about 0.5 watts, you can extrapolate that you'll get probably around 15 hours or less of battery life. Uh, so that's, that's what I gather this data for. It all ends up in a spreadsheet that I have linked in the site that I have linked in the description. Uh, anyway, let's switch that off. Get that unplugged. And we'll try out the new one. So before plugging that in, I just want to discuss this flat flex connector real quick. Uh, so Cloud Game Store likes using these. I don't know why I hate them. Um, maybe they got a bulk deal or maybe they just really like them. But either way, these are a little bit backwards compared to normal flat flex connectors. So on normal flat flex connectors, you insert the bale on the front and then insert the cable on the front. But on these, you actually lift up the back, and then you can slip the cable in the front, and then you close it like that. And that should hold the screen in pretty nicely. Uh, I also need this. It should not matter which way you install this. I'm going to install it pins down, however. Uh, the pins should make contact on both sides, so as long as you're using a straight through cable, which this is, it doesn't matter. I'd also recommend, highly recommend, plugging this in before plugging in the LCD. Because I can't get a grip on this board with that LCD there. Try that one more time. And then with that plugged in, you can just slip it into the Game Boy. Just like that, and I think we're good to go. Oh, I forgot the speaker. I always forget the speaker. I think that's the same connector we use for Game Boy Micro batteries. Interesting. And if you're looking at this line, that's just on the screen protector. Oh! The connector fell off. So one weird quirk I've noticed with uh, original Game Boys is my fingers tend to have enough capacitance to uh, use the buttons anyway without any membranes. I don't know what's up with that, but it is pretty neat. Uh, anyway, same Game Boy, same game, same location, same everything except with the backlight kit at 4.8 volts. Uh, this thing is now pulling 132 to 144 milliamps, oh, 147 milliamps. Uh, but there are also quite a few brightness levels that we can adjust with the OSD here. I've already forgotten how to trigger it. There we go. 
So first option gives us language. I'm gonna, we'll skim over the options later, but first I wanna set it to max brightness. And the Game Boy at 4.8 volts is now pulling 177 to 172 milliamps. Uh, 170 on the low end, 177 on the high end, which is quite a lot. That's 0.825 watts, whereas stock was 0.25 watts. So <laughs> that's quite a bit. Uh, but let me knock it down to the minimum brightness level, which is five. Uh, and the Game Boy is now pulling 88 to 93 milliamps, which Nah, it's quite a bit more than stock, but it's still, you know, it's, it's not terrible. Uh, 0.25 watts to 0.45 watts, etc. cetera, um, thereabouts is, it's gonna noticeably affect the battery life, but it's not gonna be too terrible. Uh, we also have options to adjust the position of the LCD on, or of the display on the LCD. Uh, we also have Pixel grid options, we only have on or off. Discuss that more a little bit later. And we have the color options so we can change the color of the on screen elements. And quick saves for all the settings. Oops. Save and exit. There we go. And it does retain settings across a reboot. Uh, but anyway, we've tested it, I've got my power usage numbers, so let's go ahead and continue the install. I'm going to separate that side and probably leave all of this together for now. Let's get this out of here. And um, I'm not going to bother reshelling this Game Boy because this is already in a cloud game store housing. and. I, don't, I actually really dig these housings. Um, however, that does mean I have something to remove from the front half of this thing. Uh, so I will go ahead and link the equipment or the, the, the shell that I'm using in the description. Um, I personally really like them. But the install should be the same if you're reshelling or using a stock housing or anything like that. Uh, one thing I did want to address when I did the install for this original kit, I don't think I even noticed this, but I bent the crap out of that PCB. Um, and I think that is one of the biggest reasons why they're shipping with a bracket now, because with the bracket, it shouldn't be possible to do what I just did. Also, one of the one of the nice, really nice things about this kit, and I, I meant to go over it when I did the two point the new version of the this kit, uh, but this is not specifically that kit. We've got this um, rotary encoder here uh, that we use to control the settings, whereas with this original kit, we had this touch sensor that controlled the settings, and then this literally does nothing. It's just here as a placeholder so that you don't have a hole when you put the thing together. So I am really glad that they're not doing that shenanigan anymore. I wasn't pleased at all when I saw that on the original kit. Like, I, I, I mean, I guess an open hole wasn't that much better either but still. All right. Can I slip that out or is that not how that's gonna work? That's not how that's gonna work. This thing was also kind of a pain in the butt to get everything lined up if I recall correctly. Okay. Because we have this, the button board that does nothing except provide a connector for the actual backlight kit and buttons. That's it. <laughs> anyway. Get this out of here. Oh 
No, of course it's covered in adhesive. Why wouldn't it be? Oh, and I forgot I stuck that down too. Because why not? Ugh. I'm fairly certain this isn't adhered to the shell though. I'll just pull that out as a unit and try and salvage that off screen later. Still a perfectly good kit. Oh, and I need this old bracket out of here, too. One other thing I didn't notice in the original install, these brackets kind of suck. There's a lot of shimmy in them, so it's very easy to get the screen um, offset, like kind of skewed sideways. The new brackets seem much more solid. So admittedly, this is kind of in there. There we go. See that too. And already got a screen. I've already got a lens in here. I'm going to reuse this lens and um, see what this thing looks like when assembled, and then maybe we'll swap out to this lens. On this end, I'm going to go ahead and detach the LCD so that I can drop it into the bracket. And then peel the film off. That is much easier than on the 2.6 inch version of this kit. And then, is that going to hold? Hey, it held. That just drops right in there. Uh, I should clean that before I button this thing up, otherwise I'm never cleaning it. There's just a little bit of adhesive on the inside of the housing from where that touch sensor was. And there we go. And from here, we just got to drop this in and start getting things screwed down. Make sure to angle it such that you can actually get to the screen connector. Make sure to drop the speaker in too. That has to be installed before this is screwed down. And then we're just good to go to uh, reassemble. So I genuinely like these Cloud Game Store housings. Um, I am a big fan of the aesthetic, uh, but unfortunately they are fingerprint magnets. Um, I've heard from a few people, they, they don't like the feel of the glossy plastic in their hand either, and I mean, that's that's subjective. I don't mind it, but I understand your opinion. Um, I don't know. I like it, but as far as playability goes, it's not necessarily the best choice depending on your personal preferences, so that one's on you, but I do like them. Otherwise, I do recommend an OEM housing, especially for these kits. Uh, the IPS ready style housings are going to be missing screw posts, um, specifically these two top ones. And you don't explicitly need them for the bracket, but you're probably going to have a better time if you use a shell that does have those screw posts. There we go. That is surprisingly not too bad. Uh, 
I think the screen's a little bit off center, and it's making this ribbon not want to go in straight. That's kind of frustrating. I hope they fix that for future batches. They just need to move the LCD connector up just a little bit. I'm using their housing, their bracket, with their kit. It should just Let's try that. Maybe that'll be fine. I really don't like how that bends though. Get the speaker wires tucked in. In, and I am not confident enough to button this up yet. Oh, okay, we're good. Cool, cool, cool. So in that case, we just need to fold the ribbon down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and crease the top against the motherboard there so that it folds flat underneath. And then I'm gonna sort of press it down. Then I'm gonna stick my finger in there and crease it again. And that should be it. If you're using an aftermarket shell, I recommend using the screws that come with it, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I just had it somewhat pre-assembled or pre-disassembled. And then because we're threading in the plastic with metal, um, we don't want it too tight. That is a good way to strip out screw posts or crack the housing. We just drop the screw in, keep spinning until it's flush with the plastic, and then back it up a quarter turn. It's only here to hold the shell together. It's not here to clamp anything together. Is that in yet? I can't see. Okay, that was in. And because this is pre-threaded, uh, that is, I have already threaded these holes, uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting the screw in, I'm spinning it backwards until it clicks. There, that was a little quiet, I'll do it again. Oh, now it's not doing it. Yeah, it's not clicking, but I felt it drop into the threads. And then once it drops in, go ahead and screw it down like normal. This ensures that we're not cross-threading the screw and not forming new threads in the housing. We do not want to form new threads because that is how you destroy the screw posts. But from there, we're good to go. So this is not the correct lens. This is the lens for the previous 2.6 inch kit. 
Uh, I just wanted to leave this installed because I wanted to show off the difference in size. Oh, that was weird. My right and left kind of suck. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, it's still doing it. I think I know what the issue is, and this might, this might be a result of me using an old shell. But all my buttons are working, so all is well. Let's move on to the next step, which is... Mako pauses for a minute to find a suction cup to remove that. Okay, never mind. You'll just have to take my word for it. Um, the new lens, you can see the right side should line up quite a bit better. Uh, the left side's a little bit over to the left, uh, and the right side is right up against the edge of the screen. Uh, top and bottom are those changed. Yeah, it looks like it's come in just a little bit, um, but otherwise, should be good. Um, best way to remove this, apply a little bit of heat to the shell. Not too much, you don't want to warp the plastic, uh, but just enough to heat up the adhesive under the lens and then use a suction cup to it off, or just disassemble the whole thing and push it out, push it out from the inside. But I'm not disassembling this thing, and I have managed to misplace all of my suction cups. I have so many of the Jesus things, and, well, I purged my collection because I had so many, and I guess I purged too many. Is there one in here? No, of course not. Anyway, let us try... That's probably Pokemon, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I want to try some test ROMs. And then we'll explore some of the features of this kit, and uh, then I think that's about it. Uh, GB test ROMs. Not cool. Uh, scrolling bars. That's the one I want. So. I've been over this about a million times, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that not everyone watching this video has seen all of my other videos or any of my other videos for that matter. Uh, so what I'm testing right here, this does two separate things. Uh, the first is it's showing constant motion across the screen to see if there's any uh, like uh, screen tearing or frame drops or anything of that nature. Um, and there isn't, at least not that I can see. The second thing it's doing is when that S in the word scrolling crosses the left-hand side of the screen, it's issuing an LCD reset command, which screens, LCDs, are populated one whole frame at a time, and that frame is populated by drawing the first pixel in the top left corner, and then the pixel next to that, and then next to that, and then next to that, and then next to that, the whole way through until you've completed a row, and then it starts at the next row the whole way through, so on and so forth, until you've got the entire screen drawn. Uh, it does that about 60 times a second. Uh, a little bit less, like 59.7 or something like that, but whatever, details. Um, anyway, the, the reason behind the screen reset is, let's say your screen is about here, drawing the frame. Uh, instead of finishing all of that, and going down, down to the bottom, uh, and then starting to draw the next frame, an LCD reset will tell the LCD, hey, I know you're right here, but we're done with this frame, let's just move on to the next one already, and then it starts over up at the top. On original Game Boy screens, you couldn't even tell this was happening because the pixel response time was just absolutely terrible, and realistically, you know, it was all analog, it didn't really need any... I mean, okay, yeah, it's technically digital, uh, but what I mean was there was no, like, fancy logic converting the signal or anything like that, so it just, it just worked. Like, you didn't see this effect, uh, but because these screens use FPGAs and such to control that sort of thing, um, that's not a good example because that doesn't have the 
backlight kit on it. Um, that doesn't always handle the screen reset nicely. Um, older kits had quite a few problems with this stuff where uh, sometimes they would just uh, do what, what's called jelly scrolling almost all of the time or especially after a screen reset they might do that for a few seconds. Um, some older kits would start dropping frames after a reset, so on and so forth. This one does seem to glitch out a little bit um, and you see some, some brief artifacting when it resets, but otherwise it does recover pretty nicely. Um, all in all, it's pretty decent, but it could be better. Um, next, another issue I want to talk about is transparency. So original Game Boys didn't have a way of making things transparent on the screen. Um, well, let's get back to the original screen on the Game Boy. The pixel response time on those was absolute garbage. So devs took advantage of the uh, the, the poor screen uh, pixel response of the original screens, and they would just flicker sprites on and off as quickly as possible. And you wouldn't see that effect on the original screen. It would just work out to a nice transparency. Uh, however, in this case, we do get we do see a little bit of flickering. That's what that's what this chain is. This is supposed to be transparent. Uh, but because this specific screen has so much better pixel response time than the original LCD, you just actually see that flickering in there. And this line up at the top of the screen, this isn't a bug with the kit. This is a bug with the actual game that we're testing. So don't don't mind that line at the top. Um, if you if I were to plug this original screen back into this thing and run the same game, you'd see that same line at the top. But anyway, so this of course is also not exactly a pass. There are some kits that do this better, um, but all in all, it's really not that big of a deal, I think, because the games that I typically play don't rely on that transparency effect. However, if you are a fan of the... Um, totally forgetting what genre this is called, uh, but the the... What are they, shmups or something? Um, anyway, if you're a fan of this game's ass, the entire background, the bat of the entire game, relies on that transparency effect. So if you play this, it's just, it's Flicker City the whole time. Now, Personally, I think this specific kit handles this flickering uh, quite a bit better than the 2.6 inch ver what? Oh, I forgot to shoot it. Um, I think this handles this kit handles flickering better than the 2.6 inch version, but it's definitely still apparent. Um, I'd consider this distracting. It's definitely not ideal, but this is also pretty playable, I think. There we go. Shot at that time. Yeah, that ain't bad at all. But let's move on before I get totally distracted. Next, I want to pull up the 240p test suite. I think. go with the shadow sprite. So this is the exact same thing that I was testing in Legend of Zelda uh, Link's Awakening. Uh, this shadow right here is intended to be transparent and so the way they achieve that is they just flicker it on and off real quick as quickly as possible. Um, and what I want to do is I want to leave it in one place and then move it around and see if there's any lingering flickering artifacts. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm not leaving it as long as I could, but I'm still certainly leaving it in place longer than it realistically would be in any other game, and I'm not seeing any issues whatsoever. There doesn't seem to be any lingering effects, so that is working exactly as it should. 
What was the other one I wanted? All right, so I like this stripes test to show off the uh, position lines. Turn that on, and you can see it just totally butchers what's going on. So what's going on is this LCD itself uses a uh, two to one ratio of pixels. So for each original pixel that the Game Boy outputs, this screen is using a two by two grid of pixels to represent, uh, which means there are four pixels on this specific LCD for every original pixel that the Game Boy would have been outputting this uh, pixel grid or lines as they call it in here this effect what that's doing is that's changing it back to a one to one ratio uh, and the other three pixels are just being represented by horizontal and vertical lines going all the way across the screen uh, i know some people really like this effect uh, they think it makes like it, it looks terrible with that test but if i bring it back to a normal looking screen you can sort of see exactly what this is achieving. Um, personally, I don't like it. I think it pretty much every backlight kit looks better with it off, but I understand why it's appealing. Uh, the, but the reason I'm bringing this up is even though this does not affect the power usage, flipping this feature on and off, you can see when I have it far away from the camera and the camera's not like auto adjusting the light balance, you can see that the screen gets visibly darker. So with this feature on, you are losing quite a bit of effective brightness on your backlight kit. Uh, it's not actually changing the brightness, and then you can bring up the brightness itself to compensate, but then that increases the power usage. So your mileage may vary if you like it. Congratulations. Uh, if not, just leave it off, and you'll probably be, be happier for it. Uh, the only... Oh, uh, I did that again. The only other thing I want to talk about are the colors there. Um, unfortunately, the OSD is kind of frustrating to get out of because it doesn't appear to time out. And the only way to get out of it is to go through, cycle through the menu options and then hit up when you get to save and exit. Um, pressing and holding doesn't seem to close the menu, even though that's exactly how you open it. Try press and hold again. Make sure I'm not totally full of shit. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. All right, but while we're in here, the other thing we can discuss are the um, color adjustments. So the original Game Boy only supports four colors. Uh, that is black, white, light gray, and dark gray. And the color adjustment in here means that you can assign any since this is a full color LCD, you can assign any color you want to any of those original four colors. Um, I'm guessing that was white, light gray, dark gray, and then black. But all I did was I changed white so that gives me a little bit of a blue tint. It makes it look a little bit more like a um, original backlight kit where you took the original screen, peeled off the reflective layer, and threw some LEDs behind it. I personally like it, but I can see why it might be a little silly. Um, next up, if we do a medium press, we get into the quick selects. So we can try different presets uh, that the kit comes with, but you can of course set your own presets if you don't like any of the colors that they're giving you. Um, I don't know. It is what it is. I think it takes some playing with to get, uh, yeah. They, they don't work on this console. I wonder why. I mean, it's still pretty neat. But uh, anyway, one last feature I want to go over. Uh, this kit does include a battery meter, so if you just quick press the uh, rotary encoder here on the side, you get that little red bar up on the top left. It's kind of hard to see, and it is very little. Um, two reasons for that. One. 
That battery meter is designed for alkaline batteries that are nominal 1.5 volts. I'm using rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries that are nominal 1.2 volts. The battery meter works by detecting the voltage these batteries are putting out. There's still plenty of charge in, the, in here, and the uh, voltage regulator in the Game Boy itself can handle a lower voltage on these batteries. The problem is, the kit doesn't know that I'm using nickel metal hydrides, it thinks I'm using alkalines, and it's looking at the voltage that these batteries are putting out, and if they were alkalines, putting out the voltage that it's detecting, they would be nearly dead. But these aren't alkalines, they aren't nearly dead, so unfortunately, if you're using rechargeable batteries like I am, that battery meter is going to be pretty much useless. If you're using a lithium ion battery mod, which I don't recommend at all for DMGs, especially if you're using a cloud game store housing, uh, because there are all these ridges in the battery compartment that you'd have to cut out. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you're using a lithium ion battery mod, this battery meter is also going to be useless because the voltages are going to be different. Uh, either you're using something that's regulated, in which case it's going to be full until it's dead, uh, or you're using an unregulated uh, circuit and it's just a different voltage. Again, same with the nickel metal hydrides. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I think that's about all I've got. Uh, this is this is a pretty decent kit. I I think I might go with the 2.6 inch version of this kit over the 2.45. Um, with one minor note, uh, if you're using the lens that comes with the 2.45 kit, your screen will be centered. I mean, the screen is already centered, I just, the lens that's installed isn't. Um, whereas if you're using the 2.6 inch kit, your screen is definitely not going to be centered. But it will be physically bigger, so, I don't know, your mileage may vary. Uh, if you're getting custom lenses, the 2.45 inch version of the kit gives you a little bit more room in the bezels for designs or whatever you want to do. Um, but either way, they're both solid kits. I don't think you can go wrong with one of these in the DMG. They're pretty nice. Uh, and I did discuss this in the 2.6 inch version uh, video that I did on that thing. Uh, but I might as well bring it up again just because... You know, like I said, I don't expect everyone watching these videos to have watched every other video of mine. So, um, lamination. There are no laminated kits from any of the popular kit makers. Uh, I believe there are a few aftermarket, aftermarket? Yeah, aftermarket. Uh, aftermarket makers making, taking these kits and then laminating them themselves. Um, I can't recommend any particular sellers, uh, especially since the only ones that I know of are on Taobao. Um, I have asked Funny Playing about it. They're not interested whatsoever. The margin, or excuse me, the volume on original Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket kits is just so low that they don't think it's worthwhile to make a new housing and make a new process for laminating screens and so on and so forth. And, you know, I get it. Uh, once you start getting laminated DMG stuff, you, your, your, tr your market is a niche within a niche within a niche. And the niche is people who like Game Boys, people who like you know, Game Boys in general, not just original DMGs. And then your second niche is people who like the original Game Boy. And then your third niche is people who want a laminated screen in their original Game Boy. Because... I mean, I get it. A lot of people want the OEM style where it's as close to OEM as possible except with a backlit screen, which neither here nor there. I'm not going to comment on that. Um, but yeah, I'm just saying the market is too small that Funny Playing considers it not worthwhile to explore. Cloud Game Store, on the other hand, I have not talked to them about it. And seeing as how they made laminated Game Boy Advance kits, uh, like a full year and a half before any shell was made that actually works with them, I'm thinking they might be a little bit more open to it. I'm not going to ask them because I don't think it's worth bugging them. I, they've already got plenty on their plate. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it. If not, they're not doing it. Uh, but either way, I think if you want a laminated DMG, this is the most likely kit to, um, to do that. Um, 
in this particular case, especially because we can go in here. Da, 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 da. Brightness, position, and we can adjust this down so that we can move the LCD up onto the lens a little bit more so that it's not sticking out the bottom. That would make that sort of modification quite a bit easier. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna leave it at the top. Uh, and then, oh, I, I sort of got distracted, huh? Um, outside the OSD, if you hold the encoder down, it decreases brightness if you hold it up. It increases brightness. It's a little bit slow, but you know, it does work. It's totally fine. Um, in fact, I, I prefer the slowness. I prefer it to be slower over being faster, um, but it's just, you know, if you hold it and it doesn't immediately change, you know, give it a second because it's, it's cycling through something like 94 steps. So it just, it just takes a bit for you to see that it's actually changing, but it does work. Pretty nice. And set that to minimum brightness, power it off, power it back on. You can see it is retaining those settings across reboots. Anyway, I think that's about all I've got. I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave this video here. I will go ahead and link in the description to the stuff I'm using, um, the housing, which comes with these buttons, and the backlight kit. Uh, I got both from Retro Game Repair Shop. Big shout out to them for providing both of these things to me uh, for the purpose of this video. Um, I, I mentioned this before, I, I do genuinely like these housings, but it's worth noting that stock Game Boys have a textured surface. These are completely glossy just so that they can be nice and transparent. I like the gloss. Anyway, that's all I've got. Um, there will be links in the description. Uh, I also link to my site down in the description, and if you click on my site, it's real simple. It's really just uh, an, an aggregate of a bunch of links. Um, but on my site, I have links to the spreadsheet that I maintain with power usage values and brightness. Um, I finally bought batteries for my brightness meter so I can start measuring that again. Um, I thought I had 9 volts, but yeah, these these expired years ago, December 2018. Yeah, they're also totally dead. <laughs> but anyway, I'll get back onto that at some point soon. Uh, on my site, there's also a link to the wiki that I maintain with write-ups on all of the other backlight kits I've messed with. Um, I've only really shown like two in this video. But for DMG alone, there are like 15 or 16 or something like that. Um, there are a lot. I made that wiki to try and help myself keep track of it, and then I made it public because it turns out it's just useful info. So check it out if you're curious. If you don't, you know, if you're looking at this video going, yeah, I kind of want to backlight my DMG, but there's so many options. What do I choose from? Well, review my wiki. I think you'll not necessarily find the answers you're seeking, but you'll find information that will help you come to the conclusion that you want to reach. Um, there's trade-offs for pretty much every backlight kit. Uh, also, I have like tools and such linked. Um, probably a bad example because I don't think I actually have the screwdrivers linked, uh, but like flux and such. Um, my PCB holders that I use when I'm soldering stuff like that. Anyway, that's all I've got. I'm going to end it here because I will ramble if you let me. So uh, thanks for sticking with me and uh, I'll catch you all next time. Keep on keeping on.